Alright, so I don't, I don't even have my uh, microphone properly set up, and I wasn't recording uh, this particular game. I'm going to try to uh, see if the replay system will work out, but this was in the Tempest. Uh, got just pulled Ace. Uh, really, really good game, so hopefully I can actually play it. Uh, but yeah, I had an absolute blast on this particular game, and as, as long as you are, you know, paying attention to the map, this particular plane can really do well. The guns aren't anything special, I and mean, the same thing you've kind of been dealing with the whole line, uh, but they do what they need to do, and um, yeah, I'm definitely going to enjoy the time it takes to upgrade to the Seahawk. The Seahawk looks absolutely phenomenal, and then beyond that, um, the Hunter looks like a game changer in my opinion. These 430 mils, um, oof. So yeah, I'm definitely going to enjoy the grind on the Tempest. Um, let's see if I can get the um, the replay system to, to work properly and we can get you to see the actual game. I, I caught a 262 a couple times. Um, his fault more than my uh, skill, but yeah. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Alright, so I'm testing out uh, Wargaming's or World of Warplanes replay system here. So this is a game I had in the Tempest a couple nights ago. Um, I didn't record it, mainly because I can't have the capacity to record every game I play. Um, and I need to get myself an external hard drive or something. But, that being said, let's see how well the uh, replay system is. Uh, so I'm in the Tempest, and... You are approaching the front line. Had quite a good game, we as we'll go. see at the end. Uh, I know the replay system is a little bit laggy, so it might look like I'm aiming for something and hitting something that I'm not actually aiming for and hitting. Um, but I'll try to explain what my thought process was in this particular game. For me, with this kind of map, um, I want to make sure I'm hitting the garrisons on the way to the center, especially if I'm in a plane like the Tempest, a multi-role plane. Um, if I'm in a light fighter, I can go towards the center and, uh, you know, kind of dogfight it out there. But in uh, the multi-roll type planes, or heavy fighters even, you can't be the first ones in there. You'll, um, you'll be focused down, right? Come on, kill this guy, thank you. So I want to pick up a garrison, or maybe even two, on the way to the center. And that way, uh, we're at least picking up points while I'm trying to do something about the airbase in the center. So over here, take down some of the excellent some of the defense aircraft. Let's take a look. So it looks like we're okay on the center. Probably thought that in this uh, when I was playing the game the first time. And so for me, I want to go ahead and try to stop or intercept any of the planes that are going from that flipped garrison towards the center. To me, this plane can do that very well, whereas as far as dogfighting is concerned, it's not the best at it. Obviously can't get that bomber. Let's see what we can do about the Sea Fang. Got a bunch of planes behind us, but we've got a good hit of speed, so definitely take down a P-47. Tempest is pretty maneuverable, right? Um, so playing like a P-47 is going to be able to get behind and take down pretty easily. Let's go ahead and circle back around here. We need to get this ground attack plane or else they're going to take the center. If I can get him and then uh, one of the weaker uh, defense aircraft. Oh, got a 262 here. And it's a human. Always important to get rid of them. Hitting the boost. See if we can stay with him. He turns, and the more he turns, he keeps turning. He's letting me stick with him. If he just went in a straight line, he'd get away. And I've run into that guy uh, quite a few times. Um, he's a good player, so I don't know if he just thought I, thought I wasn't going to be able to stick with him or what. Maybe he didn't realize I... Or contemplate that I could have had a 10 second extra boost. But we flipped center right as I wanted to use my rockets. We'll take it. So we own the center now. We've got two of the garrisons. Um, and that's that's the reason why I do the garrisons is we were gaining points 
before I had to even worry about being in the center, and I could come into the center after uh, some of the other planes got weakened. Let's see, I was uh, tempted to go for the garrison over there, but I think it's more important that we hold on to the center. So what can we do? <clears throat> Excuse me. Still recovering. I feel like I'm perpetually recovering from being sick a week ago. Let's see how well this plane tears up a ground attack. Now, a German ground attack, you know, is obviously going to be a little bit weaker as far as its ability to take hits. Um, but Tepes can certainly tear it up pretty well. Let's hit this P-47, and really the key is identifying the planes that you can stick behind and going from there. Something I do like about the Tempest is there are a lot of bots that might be in a more maneuverable plane than you, but um, you can sometimes stick with them if you if you catch them, even if they're in something like a Yak. What are we up against here? So FW, you got a C thing, an SU-9, so a bunch of uh, multi-role planes, so a lot of planes that we're going to be able to stick with or, or take down. Right now I'm just prioritizing staying in the center, kind of as if I was a, a fighter, just a normal fighter, and that's because I know these planes that I'm going against I can outmaneuver. Um, if it was a bunch of light fighter planes I would not be sticking here just because I wouldn't have the ability to. But when it's you know, three versus one, this guy might be in a, a light fighter but it's just a meteor, I can, I can stick with it long enough to be able to defeat it at least in a turn fight. So you can see I keep contemplating going to a, uh, a different sector. And every time I do, some more reds pop up and threaten the center. And to me, the center really is uh, important in this kind of map setup. Yeah, the, the garrisons obviously are, are earning more points just because there's more of them. But if we lose the center, um, or if we lose a garrison but we still have the center, we can easily get that garrison back, right? So, kind of meandering over towards this garrison, see if we can take down this KI. Uh, if I was going against a human right now, there'd be no reason that this guy would uh, ever let me get behind him. But I was kind of throttling the air brake, throttling the boost, and um, kind of making an, an elliptical shape rather than a straight circle, making a, a long oval and allowed me to, to get behind him. Let's go ahead and take down some of these heavy... F whoop! <laughs> you don't see that very often, or at least I, I hadn't before this game. Um, let's get rid of these guys. I feel like the garrison on the far side is going to be flipped to red soon, so I wanted to get this one taken care of quickly. And you can see at the center... Um, you know, there, there's a cluster in the center right now, and we're probably going to lose the center, which is a little frustrating, but let's get this garrison cleared. Alright. Let's see what we can do about getting back to the center. Now, normally I would just boost right over to the center part, uh, but you can't can't leave a plane behind you, right? So we got this meteor. We know we can outmaneuver a meteor. We know we can stick with it, typically, if we've, he's already used his boost. And he's gone. Yowzas. So this is this 262 again? A heavy storm here. Unable to proceed. Yep, and for some reason he's turning. Do you and I just don't get it when I go against a 262 or a heavy fighter like that that clearly can't outturn anything. Um, you know, I know he's going for the ground attack plane, our ground attack plane there, but he just needs to go. Just, I'm, I'm throwing bullets at him hoping I finally get him, and I did. But if he had just gone straight, he would have gotten away. And now the squall line's gone in and he's gone. So they've got the center, but we're pretty well ahead on points. We've got everything but the center. So I'm not overly worried about getting back to the center at this point. There's nothing else, so might as well head on over here. We've got the sea fang. Probably not going to chase him Victory too much. No, no, I guess I am. <laughs> Looking back at it now, I probably would have uh, bounced up and gotten that SU-9 just to make sure he didn't get behind me. It was a pretty easy kill. <clears throat> yep, got him. Got the P-47. We know we can get behind him. So again, it's just identifying what can I get behind. If I can't get behind it, 
you know, get away from it is really what it comes to, right? This P47, we got an FW190. Just got our grade one. We're getting down to near the end of the game here. They flipped the garrison, but again, we're we're so doing so well um, that it's not. I'm not in a rush to get to the center, and that's a nice position to be in when you're in a multi-role plane because you know multi-role planes really thrive on being able to identify what they're going against and you know utilizing their advantage against that. And you know in a come on burn baby you know in a light fighter you're going to be able to outmaneuver most things you run into you know in a heavy fighter you're going to be able to outgun and outspeed anything you run into but with a multi-role you've got to kind of identify what you're going against and if you're if you try to fight from behind i don't think a multi-role is the best plan because you know you, you might have to go against something that you're not going to be best in or um, fully prepared to go against but you just have to go against it because you've got to try to turn the tides. So when you're playing with the lead, multi-rolls are a great plane to have. Let's see if I can get this guy. Nope, doesn't look like it. I'm having a pretty darn stellar game. Haven't um, haven't died yet. Just got the ace. Victory is ours. We're got a whole bunch of medals here. So Marseille's ace. Cozadub, which was actually something that I needed um, at the particular time to be able to get the XP 55. So let's exit the game and check out another sortie. Alright, and so this was the last battle I had um, from the previous evening, uh, Saturday night when I did my stream. This is the battle that I ended the stream on. Uh, same map. Different uh, different sector design, of course, but I'm in a plane I absolutely love, a premium P80A Shooting Star. And so with this kind of setup, you know, it still has an air base, uh, forward air base, in the center there. But to me, you really have to get the command centers, um, even more than the mining facilities. You really want to be able to have that bomber uh, support. Now we're in a tier eight battle, so. And the bombers aren't, uh, to me the bombers are more impactful at the lower tiers. Tier 8 battle, they're, they're not like overly impactful just because they, there's usually a lot of planes that can take them down. But I still want to get the command center rather than have the enemy do that. So let's go ahead and get in here. Do some of the, what the shooting star does best, which is getting up high and dive bombing that crap out of everything underneath it, which is most everything. Um, I always boost up to about as high as you can go in this plane to start in battle. If I run into, you know, high-flying heavy fighters or RB-17s, yeah, look out! Um, yeah, you can see that the uh, the timing is definitely off on the replay. The um, I don't think any of those look like I hit, but obviously I did. Anyway, I like to get up high there in an RB-17s or a 262 or whatever. P-1056, is that it? I'm trying to think of the um, the British heavy plane. They're not necessarily expecting you, or if they are, they're not necessarily prepared for you in the beginning of the game, so I always like to get up really high with this plane in the beginning. Let's go ahead and take out this KI-93. Somebody's right behind me. Who got? Ah, friendly typhoon. Let's go ahead and... So this isn't the most maneuverable plane. But it's, uh, I've specialized in it, and I tend to um, have it kind of set up to be a little bit more maneuverable. But I still tend to go for the things I know I can outmaneuver, like the multi role planes, before I start going for the um, light fighters. Of course, these bat wings tend to have more maneuverability than a lot of light fighters, so... Take down anything I can once I get behind it. And so here I'm going to take down the fighter behind. I obviously don't want to go for the fighter in front. I can get the guy behind if I know what I'm doing. Which I do, and that'll allow me to get the guy in front. Of course, that took a little, a little bit longer than it normally does, but I'm still able to get this guy. Huzzah! Alright, while this is going on, I'm trying to flip, flip the command center, I'm really trying to just hold it off. Um, 
to make sure they can't get it. Uh, but in the meantime, we are going to hopefully get this particular command center. So we've got bombers coming in. Take, they've only got the center base. We've got a bombing run coming in to take down the, the center base. Uh, let's see. That was a premium KI-94, right? That um, Japanese heavy that was out for a little while. Got him. So right now, like I said, I'm just, I'm just being a pain in the ass and making sure that they can't get this command center and making sure that I um, being a good thorn in their side so everything I'm running into luckily I'm able to outmaneuver nobody's got any yak 15s or any craziness like that I guess I didn't realize at the time that I had there was a defensive plane there that I could have taken out we got another Batwing coming in, so let's get behind him. Got a couple more planes coming in. We need to make sure we're spinning out of their way. We, now we have both command centers, and we've taken over the center. So this game is looking to, definitely like it's going to be going in the right direction. Let's take a look at the maps while we're fighting this guy. Don't have any bombing runs coming in to get down the uh, mining facilities, but I suspect... As soon as the um, Reds take that mining facility, we'll have a bomb, bombing sortie come in. So you can see the shooting star isn't the the best at maneuvering. I mean, the P-51D took a while to actually catch up with. You really have to kind of be coming at the right angles. Whoa, watch out for the missiles there. I don't, don't think it got any off, but I was lucky not to get shot up. I'm trying to stick with this guy, and as long as... um, Once I saw that he was on fire... I was tempted to kind of boost away, but once I saw that I caught him on fire, I figured there was going to be some sort of, um, you know, detrimental damage to him to where I could outmaneuver him. Otherwise, the uh, bat wings are pretty, pretty tough to go against when you're in this particular plane. Now we got nothing to fight against right now, so we're just uh, getting up, up in the air here, and uh, see what we can do. Uh, a lot of the reds are over here at the mining facilities, and. What's funny about this particular map style is they could get both mining facilities and that's all they could have and, and pretty easily win the game just because of how many extra points they'd be getting from that. So let's go ahead and take out this Typhoon who is way too high. Got him out of there. Where are we going? Are we going to go defend the command center it looks like? There's some multi-rolls over there that I know we can take down. So we've taken them down quite a bit. We've got a P-51B coming in as well. So if we can take down one of these guys before the light fighter comes in, we'll be okay. <laughs> and that uh, replay lag is pretty, pretty wonka-doodle. Alright, so now we've got KI-93 again. Definitely be able to, to stick with him. I mean, those Japanese heavies are really, really quite awesome, but they're not going to be able to out have to a uh, shooting star, at least when the shooting star is behind it. Alright, we've got another down. Receiving reports Get this bat wing. Rapidly deteriorating weather conditions. Support will be unable to reach you. Do you read me? Maybe. Over. Slowing down to a snail's pace, 165 miles an hour, but we got him. So let's figure out what we gotta do next. So they've got both mining facilities. They are 100 points behind, but they're going to start catching up pretty darn quickly. And one of the you know, bad thing about all light fighters is you know, they don't really have the ability to flip a center, at least on their own, especially something like a mining facility. So I'm going up here to get the bomber, uh, mainly because I know the bomber is going to be able to take down things while I'm focused down on multi-rolls and heavy fighters. The bomber is going to be able to flip. I don't want it to flip, and I might be in trouble here, folks. Try to shoot him down. He is a race against the clock here. And... Holy cow. Man, when that happened last night, I was uh, out of breath. I couldn't believe that I actually survived. I knew I was basically all in at that point. If I tried to get away, the rear turrets of that B-32 were just going to eat me up anyway. Um, so it was just, I was hoping my accuracy was where it needed to be, and it barely was. I don't know why that guy clicked on me, but hey, 
so be it. Um, so now they've got three sectors, and at this point, they're going to be gaining points on us pretty darn quickly. We were 100 points ahead of them, what, 60 seconds ago? Now we're only 25 points ahead of them. And they're going to just continue to get those mining facilities. So <clears throat> I need to just start tearing stuff up. Uh, that's what I've been doing. I need to just keep on doing it. Now the squall line's in, so they're down to half their, their pilots. Let's see if we can get the other half taken care of. Because at this point, we are only 10 points ahead, and we're running out of time very quickly. And I just don't have the hit points to be able to to do what I need to do, unfortunately. Yep. But I also know that this is really going to rely on me, so what do you do? Flip the, flip, flip the script. Luckily I was able to take that down. So 32 hit points. Um, our ground attack flipped a mining facility. They're up, they're leading us by 57 points. Excuse me, 50 points thanks to their mining facilities. But we've really turned around uh, the game, the momentum um, that they had going. And whew, take a deep breath. So let's see, where are there's all the reds are gone, aren't there? There's three more. So this is, I remember I looked at the map um, at this time and said, okay, well, there's we more reds over here. So the let's go in against go. these reds and see if we can completely knock them out, kill everybody. So we're going to win on points anyway at this point. Just got the ace with that kill. and um, But I, I want as many personal points as I can get. Almost all and that's game. Left one alive, but 21 Victory frags, another Marseille. Hopefully you enjoyed the ace gameplay. Uh, feel free to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment, I uh, always respond, and otherwise I hope you have a great day.